everyone, and welcome to the Arlington Weekly News. We have a great news program today. I'm Daniel Pineda. I'm Miriam Gennari. My name's Adele Quo. Like I said, we have a great program today, Miriam. We have our news stories. You know that time. It's, it's easy being green. green. And we can't forget CVB, right, Miriam? I love the community bulletin board. <laughs> Not to mention we have a wonderful report from Denise uh, Pringle uh, about Dante's Inferno. That's going to be a Ooh. great show. Everyone should see our news for seniors. And then we'll go back to um, watch an interview uh, that I did a while back with Elingua. Awesome. Mm -hmm. now Double duty for you. Double duty. You're always on the go. Yeah. <laughs> well, a social media reminder, you can watch the Arlington Weekly News on our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash Arlington Weekly News. And yes, the number one, also, Facebook.com slash Arlington Weekly News. Miriam. Thanks, Daniel. And now on to our news. There's been several robberies around the county, including some armed robberies. On Sunday, October 10th, there were two incidents, one in Buckingham Village, where a suspect held a weapon, and another in Boston. There were two more Sunday afternoon in the 300 block of North Glebe near Buckingham mm -hmm. Village and North Moore Street in downtown Roslyn. There was another one close to midnight that same day, also near Buckingham Village. If you find yourself in an emergency situation, be sure to dial 911. If you see anything suspicious or have any information about these incidents or any others, you can file a police report at police.arlingtonva.us. Good advice. Daniel? Great advice, Miriam. Well, now to our next story for tonight. The third Indy Capital Awards event was held this past Sunday at the Angelica Film Mosaic in Fairfax. The ceremony took place before a full house, and Arlington Community Television had two winners. Rhonda Mendoza's Rendezvous won for Best Narrative Short, and Kevin Sampson's Picture Lock Show won the Best Innovative Media. Congratulations goes to all of the winners and nominees. Absolutely. Congratulations, Kevin Sampson. Kevin Sampson. Picture lock. All right. And Arlington Economic Development has opened <coughs> registration for the second annual U.S.-China Entrepreneurship Competition. The competition is for companies that want to expand globally. The winner for the U.S. will win $5,000 in cash, meetings with prospective Chinese investors, and $1,500 travel stipend along with food and accommodations and expenses paid. To compete for this international level competition in Beijing, you have to win here first. The application deadline is soon. It's October 13th. Visit arlingtoneconomicdevelopment.com for more details. <laughs> I have ideas. Yeah, you have some great ideas, right? Well, celebrity Lena Dunham was the in the D.C. area stumping for Clinton recently. The famous millennial actress, writer, producer, director, and feminist activist showed up at the Arlington-based Young Professionals event to support Hillary Clinton. The event was on Monday, October the 10th, at Barley Mac in Roslyn. Dunham stressed the importance of voting and spoke about why she wanted Clinton to be the next president. To read the full transcript of her speech, visit ARLnow.com and search for Lena Dunham. All right, and now it's yes, time for... Yes, it's that time. It's, it's easy being green. Hey, Adele. Great. Thanks so much for that wonderful introduction. It is time for another It's Easy Being Green. My name's Adele Quo, and of course my mascot, Joe Tree Frog, is uh, here too. Now, if you're ready to try something a little different this fall, join the upcoming Arlington Parks and Rec Green event to learn the basics of wild edible mushroom ID and fantastic fungi foraging. Mark your calendar for the Fall Fungi 101 hike on Saturday, October 21st. I'm sorry, that's Saturday, October 22nd, 1 to 3 p.m. For information, call 703-228-3403. Meet at Golf Branch Nature Center. Registration is required online. Or you can call 703-228-4747 and just mention activity number 612846-D. Funny thing about mushroom foraging, 
you don't really notice them until you begin looking for them. It'll surprise you there are thousands of species of mushrooms in North America, many of which have very strange shapes and don't look like anything like mushrooms at all. Some resemble heads of cauliflower or coral. They hang, protrude, and billow from tree trunks, leaf mold, dead logs, and stumps. Many mushrooms are wonderful to eat. Others are toxic enough to cause serious if temporary discomfort. A few are deadly. So join Arlington's upcoming event to learn more about these ancient organisms. The most common and popular wild edible mushrooms in Arlington include hen of the woods, Griffola frondosa, also known as maitake, and highly valued in Japanese cuisine. The flavor is very nutty, similar to portobello, with a firmer texture than button mushrooms sold in our grocery stores. There's also hen of the woods that have no toxic lookalikes and usually grows at the base of our oak trees or on the ground in Arlington. And there's chicken of the woods, which tastes like chicken. It's generally easy to spot the overlapping orange and yellow shelf fungus found on the trunk of trees. It can be used as a vegetarian alternative to chicken. It's good sauteed, either alone or dipped in flour and egg and breadcrumbs. It can also be dipped in pancake batter and deep fried, and is especially tasty in stir fry Chinese dishes. One more mention is honey mushroom, which also tastes nutty and slightly sweet and tangy as well. They grow in the clumps near the base of trees. The caps can be eaten but need to be prepared properly using parboiling to remove the bitter taste and chemicals that may upset your tummy. After experiencing the thrill of the hunt, mushroom mania may become your next delicious outdoor pastime. So have fun and enjoy nature while mushroom foraging. Yummy. Sounds good, right? It sounds really good. I think I'm going to sign up for that one. I'll only go with you. Yeah, no, I'm going to go with someone <laughs> who knows what these things with you. Yeah. Don't get the wrong one. <laughs> Absolutely. And now on to our community bulletin board. The Bonder and Amanda Johnson Community Development Corporation, or BAJCDC, has collected hundreds of coats for their community center residents. Presto Valet of Alexandria has cleaned them all, and now they need help distributing them. Volunteers are needed to help sort the coats and assist recipients with selecting the perfect code for themselves and their family from all of the choices. Find out more details at 703-229-5650. That's very nice. Very great, yes. Well, you can share the spirit of the holiday season by volunteering with the Holiday Project. The Holiday Project of the National Capital Area is a nonprofit that organizes visits to people in hospitals, nursing homes, and assisted living facilities during the holidays. Volunteers at these events will sing carols, distribute cards, and gifts and bring the spirit of the holidays. If this sounds like uh, something that you would like to do, give them a call at 703-370-0370. Another great, yeah, nice another great opportunity. Story, yeah. yeah. Well, under the direction of the PRS Crisis Link Text Line Supervisor, a volunteer is needed. The Volunteer Crisis Text Connect Counselor will use active listening and provide online emotional support to confidential users who are in crisis via text or chat platforms. The Volunteer Crisis Text Connect Counselor will provide one four-hour shift per week for one year after successful completion of training. Call 703 531-6351 to learn more. Daniel? Yes. Now we go on to uh, Denise Pringle with her great uh, uh, talk about Dante's Inferno. Let's watch. To open its new season, Synetic Theater in Crystal City has decided to prove that it can deliver the essence of Dante's Inferno without words. If you are not familiar with Synetic, it is a theater that is committed to presenting classic works of drama with movement, acrobatics, dance, and music, often with no spoken dialogue. Synetic's co-founder and award-winning choreographer, Irina Tishkirshavili, has directed an intense depiction of Dante's travels through hell. Vatko Tishkirshavili has Dante is joined by the spirit of the Roman poet Virgil, Alex Mills as they pursue Dante's muse Beatrice, Tony Bertocci, through hell. The circles are inhabited by the condemned suffering souls 
and Lucifer and the various demons who tortured them endlessly for the various sins they committed while on earth. For centuries, the words of Dante have defined the horrors of hell with its nine distinct rings inhabited by the different categories of sinners who must reap the tortures befitting their distinct crimes against humanity. Now the artistic staff at Synetic has translated his words into a visual concept of the torturous existence for these damned souls. The greedy writhe as the demons force feed them. The hypocrites must bear the crosses they betrayed in life. The wrathful are caught up in a never-ending loop of violence and killing. Incredibly, the brilliant and imaginative choreography does justice to the epic work that is still studied by academics 700 years after it was written. The set is minimal, dismal, dark, and smoky. Its geometric shapes offer a backdrop that is as bleak as the suffering it hosts. The smoke is evocative, and closer examination reveals that the flames are actually the hands of the souls under intense red lighting. If you have yet to see Synetic present a classic work in their own unique styling, I highly recommend this production. If you were impressed by the Olympic athletes and their short routines this summer, come see the grueling routines these actors can sustain for 100 minutes. Just watching Vato as Dante and his jumps and backflips as he battles the demons should count as a worked out. Dante's journey through hell continues at Synetic Theatre through October 30th. I'm Denise Pringle, filling in for Rich Misabney. Now back to the news desk. Thank hey. you so much, yeah. Yeah, I, absolutely. I definitely want to see it. Yeah. All right, well, <laughs> now that we're done with I'll Denise, do. we'll move on to our news for seniors. How would you like some decorated seasonal pumpkins to brighten up your doorstep? You can learn how to make it happen on Thursday, October 20th at the Lee Community and Senior Center. Park at 5722 Lee Highway in Arlington. The event lasts 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. You'll need to bring your own pumpkin. I guess that's B-Y-O-P. But all other materials will be provided. They recommend that your pumpkin is about the size of a grapefruit. I don't know why, but I wouldn't argue. For more information, call Adriana Carr at 703-228-0555. Never Daniel? go to argue. Never go to argue, no. Not at all. <laughs> well, maybe seasonal pumpkins aren't your style, or maybe your house is already full of them. If that's the case, you may want to check out the Storyteller Hour at the Arlington Mill Community and Senior Center, which is located at 909 South Dinwiddie Street in Arlington. They say that riveting stories can transport and engage. The event starts at noon on Thursday, that's October the 20th, and finishes at 1 p.m. For this session, Johanna Wilner will speak about her experiences under Soviet occupation in eastern Germany, her struggles, and her final escape to the West. Ms. Wilner is the author of Christine. A Life in Germany After World War II. Participants are encouraged to bring their own lunch. For more information, give uh, Jennifer Weber a call. That's at 703-228-7369. Thanks, Daniel. To discuss world events that have changed the course of history, join Professor Ralph Ostrich of Northern Virginia College and lecturer at George Mason University. It's a history discussion you don't want to miss. A history background is not necessary, just interest and a curious mind. The discussion will be at Culpeper Gardens on Thursday, October 20th from 1 to 2 p.m. Call 703-228-4403 and tell them that you're coming. Daniel? Yeah, you always have to let them know that you're coming, right? That's right. Space is limited. Well, come listen to our latest band playing Root, Rhythm, and Yes, Blues, and Bluegrass. It's a perfect way to start the week. This group meets on the second and fourth Monday of every month. They will play next at Lee Senior Center on October the 24th from 10.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Give them a call as well at 703-228-0555 to reserve your seat. Miriam. 
And now for a Halloween spectacular. Bella and Marlo are performing Jack Russell Terriers. You'll be amazed by their performance with their owner, Marion D'Angelo, in costume. Marion's Terriers will do tricks that amaze you. Wear a costume and join the fun. That will take place at Arlington Mill on Tuesday, October 25th from 11.15 a.m. till noon. Call 703-228-7369 to save a spot. Daniel? Well, Miriam, this old German celebration started in 1910 in the Bavarian part of Germany and is still being celebrated today. Six million people attend the festivities in Germany. But if you can't make it to Germany this time, join in the festivities at Culpeper Gardens. They will be offering German delights as, such as sausage, uh, uh, pretzels, which are, and uh, with traditional German music, the band Blaskapel Alt, uh, Cameradian will be playing and this will be taking place at Langston Brown Senior Center that's on Wednesday October the 26th from 11:30 to 1 p.m. there will be a big uh, there will be a fee that is of six dollars a big crowd is expected so you must call and register the number is 703-228-6300 those seniors have so much fun yeah they're always having fun <laughs> all right well now we're going to move on to my interview with Adam McKay. He's the owner of Elingua. It's a school here in Arlington. They're in Roslyn, and he brought along one of his students, Mabel Gonzalez. Let's watch. Hi, and welcome to another edition of the Sustainable Scoop. Washington, D.C., and in particular, the Arlington area, is a great place to visit and a wonderful place to live. And thanks to my guest today, Adam McKay, who is the president of Ilingua, he is offering students from around the world that opportunity. Welcome, Adam. Thank you. And along with him is one of the Ilingua students that are currently attending the program, Mabel Gonzalez. Welcome. Thank you, Miriam. Adam, Tell me, how did you get involved in um, owning a, a language program or school? I personally had done a lot of study abroad and learned languages and spoke, uh, learned four languages. And so I've lived abroad and studied abroad, and I thought it'd be really cool to own a school where there's hundreds of students right here from all over the world and be involved in providing that, that uh, international experience to them. Now, Mabel, your company sent you here to the United States from Ecuador to study in Roslyn at Ilingua. Um, tell us a little bit about what you do in Ecuador. Yeah, I'm working in Sub Miller, the brewery in Ecuador. I am the customer interaction director. Oh, no. It's so important that you speak English then in your position, in an international position. So, so how has the experience been so far? Yeah, my boss sent it to me here because he, uh, I need to improve my English and that is a great opportunity to make this. One of the things that you mentioned was the culture and um, I'm very proud to say that Mabel is one of my students and I am a host family for her. So she gets the culture of living with a crazy American family. Now, Adam, Mabel is from uh, Ecuador, but tell us about some of the students from around the world. Her company center here, tell us about the variety. Yeah, well, as, as you know, D.C. is a top 10 global city. It's a rising city, and we attract people from all over the, all over the world. And we're in, in, uh, increasingly, it's a globalized, globalized economy. And for example, Mabel worked for the National Beer Company of Ecuador, which was bought by S.A.B. Miller, the second largest brewery in the world. And that's a common story. So, you know, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, there's uh, international business deals going on, and you could, next thing you know, be working for an international conglomerate. Um, so we get students like that from all over the world. We have some younger students who are in the college age, maybe trying to go to grad school and learn English here before going to grad school. But then also, uh, right here, there's a big local market. Because we're such a global, international city, we're a great destination. And a lot of companies here have uh, people who um, English is not their native language. And if they invest just a little bit of money, in, yeah. and, and I think you mentioned when we spoke before about Clark Construction, yeah. some of these people that are really great at uh, architecture and design, and they need to be able to communicate yeah. their ideas, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's certainly a floor. It doesn't matter how intelligent or skilled you are. If you can't communicate, communication is such a key skill. There's a floor on your career growth. And, and particularly in English, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
Now, in addition to all of the learning that takes place in the classroom, your students have an opportunity to enjoy the sights Absolutely. and the sounds of Washington, D.C. Maybell, tell us some of the things that you've done since oh, you've been I, here. I have been visit the monuments, the different museums, and of course, shopping. Yes, Maybell has done her share of shopping. <laughs> but I think that the interactions that you have, both at school, out in the public, taking the metro, actually learning the bike trails is also a good opportunity. Yeah, it's a new experience for me, yes. totally a new experience. And, and for people who are looking for an opportunity to come to the school and learn English, how do you identify what level they're at and what kind of progress you can make in a, in a yeah, short it's a, period it's of time? It's a fantastic question. So we have open enrollment at our school. So every Monday somebody can join and the first thing we do is give them an assessment test. And it takes about an hour, and uh, it's a very good diagnostic test, and it tests all parts of language, reading, writing, speaking. And um, yeah, it's, so we do that on the front end, and then we measure the progress and put them in the appropriate level. We have nine levels of English, and put them in the right one, and make sure that they're very, very challenged, and build their confidence in the language from day one. So a lot of our methodology is dialogical, communicative, and the students are speaking constantly. So I, I have to, again, congratulate Maybell for the courage to come on a television show and, yeah. and show us what she's learned in English. But I have to say that I am just amazed at how well you prepare your students for the fields they're going into, whether they're going to be an airline stewardess or they're going to work for an embassy or, like Maybell, is going to be doing international business. It's great that you focus their, their attention in that way. Yeah, thank you. Well, so in terms of like your long-term plan for Ilingua, I mean, you've got a great location, you're right, right off the metro. What are you hoping to achieve in the coming year? Yeah, we want to continue to increase our diversity and a few uh, target markets overseas. We'll hope to see increasing students from Turkey and from China. And then locally, we're really interested in expanding upon the, we mentioned the Clark Construction, uh, helping their employees, but go, even in the hospitality industry, we're, we're trying to work with corporate partners well, you bring up, uh, you know, Turkey and other countries like that. I mean, this area is really big for IT and cybersecurity, and it would seem that if you were able to educate uh, some of the people who are coming in on government contracts, that would be very valuable as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I just have to say also from my perspective as a host family, having students from South Korea, uh, Thailand, Ecuador, Mexico, Japan, I can go on and on, has been such an amazing cultural experience for our family. So you actually give a lot to the community with a program like yours. Very happy to be able to share the students with uh, host, host families in the area. I take excellent care of them. I well, now, do. how do they get in touch with you? Uh, they can go to our website. It's uh, inlinguaenglish.edu. So that's I N L I N G U A E N G L I S H dot edu. Yes, and you can also use your voice recognition for alingua.com. Is that correct? Uh, in linguadc.com. Oh, linguadc.com for our radio viewers. Well, I want to thank you both for coming today. I really do uh, appreciate the work that you do, and I'm fascinated by it. When you have an open house, please let us know. We will. All right. Thanks. And I want to thank you viewers for watching another edition of The Sustainable Scoop. I'm Miriam Gennari. Back to the news desk. Great interview. Thanks so much to Adam McKay, the uh, owner of Alingua, and his student, Maybell Gonzalez. And after that interview aired, yeah. SAB Miller, which uh -huh. is the company she worked for, um, became the largest international brewery company in the world. Wow. Yeah, so that's really interesting. Right? I know, I know. I'm so happy for her. Sounds interesting. So speaking of interesting, Adele, there are some fun things happening, but yep. one in particular on Saturday. Saturday's got a lot of green events, and um, I'm looking forward to picking up a free pawpaw native tree. Ooh, I didn't get the memo. Yeah, though, I, you know, I talked about it, I think, a year ago. Okay. <laughs> and every year, there are these free, one residential household gets a free native tree. You do have to register for it. And you still can. I think it's tonight's the last night, though. Oh, okay. So, but on Saturday, I'll be getting a 
pre-pawpaw tree. <laughs> and do you know how they get those native trees? Exactly. Great question, because I think <laughs> you have to get the seeds collected. So there is an event coming up on Saturday to collect the seeds with the, uh, is it ACE or is it the Potomac Conservancy? Conservancy. Yes, they're, they're working together, but all the details are up on the website. On the website. That's a great family exactly. event. Exactly. And Daniel, are you going to be volunteering Absolutely. this Absolutely. It's such a great event. And you were telling me a little bit about it earlier. Great event, right? Well, including getting free trees, collecting seeds. There's always mm -hmm. some fun um, Parks and Recs class that you can sign up. Don't forget the mushroom hike that oh, I was talking about. Oh, the mushroom yeah. hike. Let's go on the mushroom hike. Yeah, absolutely. It sounds like <laughs> fun. Yeah, you'll learn a lot. Um, there's like a fall heritage festival, if you like that kind of thing. I think the Renaissance Festival is going on yeah, right see? now. So, so there are a lot of great things lots going Lots of on. things going, uh, especially this month in October, right and, before Halloween. And the tennis courts are really busy. Yes, I'm ready for my match. Let's go. Let's, let's <laughs> put it on. Well, thank you so much for watching the Arlington Weekly News. We really appreciate it, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.